Hi, it's Alan Fossil, director of the AKC Museum of the Dog. We're here today in the library of the uh, museum and speaking with Peggy Reed, the author of The Dogs of Camelot, about the uh, Kennedy dogs. And I want to talk to her about that. She published it a couple of years back. Um, so if you know Peggy, she's a famous dog trainer. Um, she's on the board of the Cornell, um, Cornell, uh, uh, what is it, the Cornell? Baker Institute. Uh, Baker Institute of, of Animal Health and member of the John F. Kennedy um, Library and Museum uh, President's Council. Um, so what was the idea of um, um, the, the book? We have it here. Uh, it's for sale in our um, uh, bookshop. And um, Peggy, if you will have some uh, autographed copies available as well. But I understand you wrote about the um, dogs, Camlet, the Kennedy dogs, because you had a, a very early firsthand experience with them. I did. When I was a young child, I uh, had the opportunity of vacationing on Cape Cod. And when we were sitting outside, a big dog came into the yard, giant German Shepherd. I've always loved dogs. Mm -hmm. I was four years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dog had a ball in his mouth and he kept pushing at for me to play with him. And my mother was in the kitchen and she was screaming, get out, get away from the dog. It was a very frightening situation. Yeah, and her, yeah. two men in dark suits came along. They called them. They said, Clipper, let's go, boy. And uh, off they went. And I was sort of devastated because I was sad to see the dog go because it was one of the few child playmates that I had seen on the Cape. And that was a, a, one of the famous Kennedy dogs. It was. It was President Kennedy's uh, German Shepherd Clipper. And it's interesting to note that only 18% of the population today has a living memory of President Kennedy. Oh, really? That's that's interesting because it I, is. we we all define our generation by where were you exactly when, that kind of thing is, exactly yeah. I mean, even as a six year old I remember exactly where I was um, so um, now I understand um, you uh, met with the Kennedys um, and they're all fond of dogs it sort of runs through the family well you know it's such a large family there's so many mm -hmm. of them and like with anything some really love them some think they're okay and others don't want to have anything to do with them. Sure. So it is. It's a big family. Yeah. Now, numerous um, presidents in our sh our show of uh, presidential dogs had large collections. Teddy Roosevelt comes to mind. Um, but I think the uh, Kennedys take the cake as far as the largest menagerie. They had at least nine dogs, horses, hamsters, and a whole lot of things. They did. When they first got to the White House, they had one dog, Charlie. Oh, really? And by the time the uh, president was assassinated, they had nine dogs. Wow. That's crazy. Um, now, one of the, you mentioned Charlie, and he's on the cover of the uh, the book here, um, a Welsh terrier. Um, is there anything special about him, or do you just like the photograph uh, for the cover? Well, I found out when you're writing books that you really have very limited control over it, and the publisher thought that was the great picture to use. Yeah, that's great. Well, what, what made Charlie so special? Well, Charlie was the president's first dog, mm -hmm. and uh, is actually Caroline's dog that the ambassador had given to mm -hmm. her. And he descended from a very famous show kennel himself, mm -hmm. which was the Port Fortune Kennels up in Osterville, Massachusetts. Yeah. And his real name was Port Fortune's uh, Sarah's Ben. Wow. So his name was Ben. But mm -hmm. everybody thought he was a good time Charlie. So that's why they ended up calling him Charlie. And Caroline really liked the name. Yeah. And apparently he was fairly gregarious like most uh, Very Welsh's. gregarious. And back in the day, they didn't believe in spaying or neutering. So he was an intact male that yeah. had the run of the place, chasing the ducks, yeah. herding the goldfish, <laughs> going after the maintenance men. But a very yeah. even keeled, nice dog for yeah. children yeah. to have. Now, you mentioned he had a, a, a sterling pedigree. He did. Um, but he was um, not averse to some backyard breeding. Uh, himself, exactly, yeah. yes. Yes, after he got away from the show kennel, yeah. Yeah. And then with Pushinka. That's what I said. He, he exactly. Right there in, in the backyard of the... Which the, the president called the Pupniks. The, the Pupniks. You want to tell us about Pushinka? Pushinka? No. Well, the, sure. it's an interesting story about Pushinka because Mrs. Kennedy was at a state dinner in Vienna, and she was seated next to Premier uh, Khrushchev. And she was running out of things to say, and Strelka had just made the uh, trip around space. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, why don't you send me some of those puppies, yeah. for lack of anything better to say. And in June, a puppy showed up mm -hmm. from the Russian uh, embassy. That's right. And the puppy was given to the Kennedys, but they were concerned about national secrets and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So they sent the puppy off to Walter Reed Medical to have it x-rayed and to make sure there weren't any bugs or anything wow. within the dog. That's right. And so um, they had they had um, four? Um, they had four puppies and she had just had the miscarriage with her own child, yeah. Patrick. 
and she was running a contest for a boy and a girl across the United States to write a letter. She received over 5,000 letters, mm -hmm. and she would decide who would get the puppies. So one went to a, a boy in uh, Missouri, and the other one went to a girl in Illinois. Yeah, there was a story about that. It was very touching, kind of semi-tragic. The boy then getting the, the pupnik. What was, you, well, the story about the boy was he wrote the letter. He, the dog had been his 4-H uh, project, and he was out yeah. playing baseball, and he inadvertently killed the dog. Yeah, just really. So that touched Mrs. Kennedy's heart, yeah. and that's why she decided to send that puppy yeah, to him. It must have been crushing for him. It would be great to have a, a, a pupnik. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And some of them are still around. You know, the descendants of them oh, are really? still around today. Yeah. yeah. Do we know what kind of a breed that the... An That's all American. <laughs> but the, the, the Russian dog? Was an all American. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, now, um, Mrs. Kenny had um, dogs as a child, and I think she was interested in breeding. Um, we have uh, in our archives stories about her wanting to breed the last dog that they had, the one they took away from the White House, which was Shannon. Correct. Um, and there was a big um, to do coming to the, uh, the AKC to get the papers you know, signed. Right. Mrs. Kennedy uh, kept Shannon. She mm -hmm. had nine dogs. That was the only dog that she kept when she left the White House. And she'd kept it because that was the last gift that President Kennedy had given to her. Mm -hmm. And she had just gone through the miscarriage. And uh, the president said, this dog looks so sad. He knew how the dog felt after coming over from Ireland. And that's why Mrs. Kennedy decided to keep that particular dog. That's great. And she decided that John wanted to be a breeder of dogs. So she mm -hmm. did come to the AKC to get the paperwork. And I knew it was quite a trying situation for them to get everything uh, on board. And she went down to New Jersey to the on-time uh, English Cockers mm -hmm. and spoke with the Pragers. Okay. And they had a litter of four puppies. Mm -hmm. And John kept one, and he called that one Whiskey. Oh, great. That's great. Um, now, I mentioned um, your dog trainer. Uh, and uh, a judge yes, and an evaluator. Um, we hear about a lot of the presidential um, uh, dogs exhibit, a lot of dogs having the run of the place. Would any of them qualify to be a canine good citizen? Well, I think any dog could be a good citizen <laughs> with the right amount of yeah. training, but uh, training was not a priority back in the day. But of all the dogs, I think the most even keeled one and the nicest dog was certainly Shannon. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shannon was a sweetheart. That's great. Um, now, I understand you have another presidential dog project. I do. Out. That's what Fella, um, FDR's famous Scotty. Right. And the reason I write these books is because when I'm reading the information on the Internet, I'm saying, well, that's not right because I know firsthand. So what I do is I try to set the story straight with the actual facts that I have. And Fella actually comes from my hometown of Wilton, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and was born just around the corner. And I've gone to the, RF, uh, the uh, FDR library a couple of times, mm -hmm. and they have such an extensive amount of information on Fowler mm -hmm. that the American public was writing letters directly to the dog. <laughs> and there's not a whole lot of political research written about dogs and how it affects the elections, and I think it should. Mm -hmm. But they felt that during war times, dogs are very essential. During economic downturns, you don't see too many dogs. So that's how they're correlating it. Yeah, no, it's fun. You know, Fowler was uh, famous for the Fowler speech we have you know, on, on our library. And what's interesting, in, there was a, um, a YouTube from the, the FDR library, and they have the, the um, actual speech, and much like the um, uh, They'll Live in Infinity speech, how you can see how he edits. And what's amazing is the man's incredible timing. If you want to see it, just, you know, as he, reads the room and tells the story about um, Fowler being supposedly left behind on the Aleutians and the Republicans for coming up with this story. And how his dog was insulted by the yeah, whole he thing. Said, he was, I remember saying, yes, uh, you know, Fowler's scotch. <laughs> and his scotch soul was furious. You know, you know, Fowler's scotch. <laughs> and being a Scotty, as soon as he learned that the Republican fiction writers, in Congress and out, had concocted a story that I'd left him behind on an Aleutian island and had sent a destroyer back to find him at a cost to the taxpayers of two or three or eight or twenty million dollars, his Scott soul was furious. 
And he was such a great orator, too. Yes, I mean, it was, really the timing was, was fabulous. fabulous. Yeah, yes. Great. But I think what's also uh, worth noting is that the Roosevelts were in office for so long. He was elected for four terms. They had 12 dogs prior to Fowler. That's right. And Fowler was the one that people remember the most because of the advent of television. Yeah, he was, he, well, not TV, but that was, I think the newsreels in those days. Right. Yeah, he was. He was Very popular. Always popular. That's great. Um, so, uh, is that coming out as a book then for us? That will be coming out as a book, hopefully within the next nine months. Okay. So. And some great new pictures that haven't been seen, and some great stories told by his uh, own people mm-hmm. that are, are kept as archives. Well, he was he was in the in the newsreels. They have him doing tricks and other things. Um, I heard from someone they say down in Warm Springs um, that they show where he's actually scratched the glass. I don't know if he did or not, but at least the panes are around there. And so you, Well, it was interesting because the president passed away down in Warm Springs, and when he died, the dog was with him, and they said he went outside and he howled. And they said it was a very mournful howl. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time. Oh, it was my pleasure. And uh, we'll have you sign some books, and people, if they want to uh, have them here, um, I think we have them uh, for sale for $19.95. It's a great read, um, full of pictures, um, great you get access to the presidential library. I did, and all the AKC papers are still at the John F. Kennedy Library archives. Uh, and we have some here as well. It Perfect. Great. So good. And we'll look forward to the Fallow book next year. Sounds great. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Alan. Sure.